station of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are LA. Gorgeous night for baseball here at Angel Stadium. The Halos, however, have dropped the first two against the Baltimore Orioles. First two consecutive losses here at home since May 6th and 7th against the Yankees. But uh, you know what? There's always tomorrow, and it's tonight. Right. Game three of this uh, three-game set. Hi, everybody, from inside the Big A. We welcome you back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West, along with Mark Dubiza. I'm Victor Rojas, and with a uh, little two-game losing streak, might as well have the ace on the mound, Jared Weaver. On the hill for the Halos, looking for his 11th victory. Yeah, Victor, he has such good feel for all his pitches. And we take a look at our AT&T U versus Rewind. You're going to see the feel he has for all of his pitches. Four quality pitches he can go to each and every time to get a big punch out. He's got that ability to throw that big, slow curveball at 68 miles an hour. No seam fastball, which has been effective for him of late against lefties. You know, backdoor on his changeup or curveball. But that no seam fastball, I think, is going to be a key. And that emotion again, Justin Smoke. He's the emotional leader of this pitching staff. Last six starts, 3-0. He's been very, very good. Last time he lost here was against Cleveland back on June 16th. Nine straight season, which he's had 10 or more victories and over 100 strikeouts during those seasons, which is very, very good record for the Angels. So we've out there tonight. Again, you got to establish a fastball in, get these hitters out, these powerful hitters from Baltimore out with all speed pitches. The pitching has not been bad as the Angels have lost the first two games by the finals of four to two. It's the Angels' offense, however, has been quieted by the Orioles' pitching staff, and today they'll face another right hander. Fountain Valley product, Chris Tillman on the hill for Baltimore. So we're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A. So sit back and relax. We're going to bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we return.
Jared Weaver on the hill for the Halos tonight, trying to uh, pick up the finale of this three-game set. The Angels took two or three from the Seattle Mariners have dropped the first two here against the Orioles. And uh, tomorrow night we'll begin a four-game series against the visiting Detroit Tigers. Tigers uh, might be on the ground already here in Southern California. They finished up their game against the Diamondbacks uh, with a victory earlier today. As we take a look at the standings as presented by Kia, the American League West. Houston defeating the Oakland Athletics in extra innings last night, so the Angels remain two back in the standings. Seattle was at eight and a half, but they lost earlier today to Bartolo Colon and the New York Mets, so they find themselves now nine back in Texas and New York in a uh, long rain delay uh, in New York right now, so that game is still ongoing and New York leading the Rangers. So that's where we stand right now as far as the American League West is concerned. The Angels, even with the two losses, still uh, overall very good record at 59 and 40. 34 and 18, still the best record in Major League Baseball. And uh, like we said in the open, it's the fact that the Angels' offense has been stymied. Uh, they saw some very good pitching from the Seattle Mariners over the weekend. They were able to overcome it and pick up two games out of that three-game set. Uh, in this series, that, that has not been the case. Uh, both starters have been good. Norris and Gonzalez throwing a lot of strikes. And a lot of pitches on the outer part of the plate, successfully hitting the outside corner and working with the umpires, getting those calls with the fastball low and away. Jared Weaver, as he has done for uh, the better part of the season, wearing the home white uniforms here on the beach blanket giveaway night. Expecting a big crowd here this evening on a warm evening. For Southern Californians, we'll take a look at the lineup for Buck Showalter. The Baltimore Orioles at the start of the day, a four-game lead in the American League East with a 55-44 and 44 record. Nick Marquez will lead things off and right. Devin Lowe is the left fielder. Adam Jones in center. Nelson Cruz at DH. Chris Davis at first. J.J. Hardy is short. Jonathan Scope at second. Ryan Flaherty gets his second consecutive start at third base as Manny Machado is still dealing with that uh, tightness in his lower back. And Nick Huntley back behind the plate. He started game one of his three-game set. Jared Weaver, 10 and 6 in a 3.43 ERA. As you've already spoken to it, uh, the fact that he has uh, pitched very well here of late. Yeah, he's been throwing the ball well. Last six starts, 3 and 0. 64 and 27 in his career here at the Big A. But the keys for Weave to be successful against Baltimore keep the ball in the yard. Baltimore relies so much on the home run. They lead the American League in the home run category. Weaver's been much better than that when of late, and location of the fastball is vital for Weaver. If he spots his fastball inside well against their power hitters, then that opens up the outer part of the plate. Take a look at the Angels defensively behind Weaver after a couple of nights at DH. Josh Hamilton back and left. Mike Trout at center. Cole Calhoun in right. The infield has David Fries, Eric Ivar, Howie Kendrick, and Efren Navarro from third to first, and Chris Ainetta behind the plate. And it, with Chris getting the start back to get behind the plate, is thrown out. 20% of would-be base dealers. Last year, 15%. Five hours last season, zero this season so far. Framing and calling the pitches and working well and quickly with Weaver. So important for that rapport for a catcher-pitcher relationship. Nick Markek is ready to lead things off. Tonight's first pitch being delivered by the UPS Store. Buck Showalter, the manager of the Baltimore Orioles. Now it is the fifth season. Last year tied for third in the American League East with an 85 and 77 record. They play much better this year, especially in a down year for the uh, division. Although Boston and Tampa, play, Tampa Bay, I should say, have played much better in the month of July. First one tonight. It's in there for a strike. Markek is hitting 291. Seven home runs, 32 runs batted in. Went 0 for 5 last night. Two ground downs, three fly ball outs for Nick Markekis. His 20th double in the opening game of the series. And it's no balls, two strikes. That's that good no-seam action on his fastball for Weaver. First two pitches starting off the inside corner and catching the corner against Markekis. O2 now from Weaver, and that is up and away. The eight runs that the Baltimore's put on the board in the first two games of the series. Um, good chunk of them because of that long ball that you were talking about. But six of the eight runs coming with two outs. Breaking ball, popped him up. Chris Sinetta comes out from behind the plate. 
Camped underneath it, makes the catch, and that's how this ball game starts. There's out number one. Well, there's a pretty good indication how well Weaver is already starting to spot his fastball. Marquez is well at in front of that slow curveball at 70 miles an hour, ends up popping it up. And we could talk about Weaver's great curveball and his changeup and slider, but really it's all set up by his ability to spot his fastball. There's David Lowe getting to start out in left field. A 197 average with a couple of home runs. Eight runs batted in. He's coming to the game late to the both games of the series. Pinch runner two nights ago, last night as a defensive outfielder. Good speed, former Kansas City Royal. Came over from Kansas City in exchange for Danny Valencia, third baseman. First time that Lowe's ever faced Jared Weaver. One one now. This is over to third. Reyes was already playing in on the grass and fires across the diamond for the second out. Boy, that curveball at 68 miles an hour for Weaver. So two outs, nobody on, and Adam Jones coming to the plate. The hero two nights ago with two two run home runs. Now with 19 on the year, 63 runs batted in. 298 overall batting average. And taking a while to get into the batter's box. I think he's, uh, I think he's now ready. First one from Weaver. Just missed inside. One ball, no strikes. Al Gibson calling the balls and strikes tonight. Chris Cuccione at first, Eric Cooper at second, Tom Halley at third base. Big swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Pop up and a ground out to start the game. Weaver, last start was against Seattle. Two runs, six hits, six innings of work at eight strikeouts. Two walks. Eight strikeouts, the most he's had in a game since he had nine against the White Sox here on June the 6th. It's just down. A couple pitches already in this first inning for Weaver at 90 miles an hour, which is a good sign for him. Jared threw just 104 pitches in that last start. Down to no decision. That was the uh, walk-off win in 16 minutes. Jones skies one. Looks like it's playable. It's Efren Navarro backing out. Howie Kendrick cutting across. Calls off Efren. He makes the catch at fair territory. And a 1-2-3 inning for Jared Weaver. Calhoun Trout Pujols coming up for the Angels.
first inning. We'll take a look at Mike Sosha starting nine for the Angels in the finale of this three game set. Cole Calhoun leading things off and right. Mike Trout at center. Albert Pujols at DH tonight. Hamilton back and left. Ibar at short. Kendrick at second. David Freeze at third. Efren Navarro at first. And Chris Ennett about a ninth. And doing the catching as they take on the 26 year old right hander. Born in Anaheim, but raised in Fountain Valley, California. His name is Chris Tillman. Chris Tillman, fastball, 89-94. He'll throw a cut fastball, curveball, changeup. Loves to hit that outside part of the plate. To be successful against Tillman, his outside corner has been an issue. We've seen the first two games with Norris and Gonzalez living with fastballs away. You have to have that approach of hitting the ball the other way. And when he throws the curveball, make sure... It's in the strike zone. If it's out of the strike zone, do not attack it because it's going to be a swing and miss pitch. First one from Tillman tonight is a little bit low. Tillman, a uh, tall drink of water. 6'5, 7 and 5, marking a 403 ERA. Mason Cole is hitting 288. 11 home runs, 26 RBIs for Calhoun. Hit list last night, 0 for 4. Cuts through that one. Evens up the count at one ball, one strike. Much different type of pitcher Tillman is than uh, Gonzalez. I mean, not obvious the fact that he's right handed, but a different angle. A little bit different stuff than Norris and or Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel Gonzalez moved the ball around all four quadrants of that strike zone last night. Cole fouls it back one and two. Gonzalez going seven and two thirds and allowing two runs. And of course, that was because of Trout's home run the opposite way. Mike's 24. He's currently on deck. Hundred and twenty-five innings for Tillman this year. 121 hits, 80 strikeouts, and 49 walks. Bouncer back to the mound. And to reach for the breaking ball. There's the first out here, the bottom of the first. Defensively for the Orioles, low. Jones and Marquez from left to right. Flaherty, Hardy, Scope, and Davis from third to first. Huntley behind the plate. We've already seen what Scope can do with the bat, especially last night. He's been very solid defensively. Four hours this year at second base, but zero in his last 29 game. Very good range to the glove side. Strong throwing arm also. That's a Trout's home run last night. First hit of the series. It really pitched him. Well, last night, Gonzalez had him for a couple of strikeouts on the inside and outside part of the plate. Both looking like the four strikeouts in this series takes just off the plate. So the approach for the Baltimore Orioles against Trout is just to feed him stuff away from him. And he's been taking a lot of those pitches. Several on uh, two nights ago were off the plate. That one's in there. It's one and one. And living away once again. And when you look at Chris Tillman, his delivery is a little bit different than normal. It's almost if he's starting in the stretch position. You see some starters do that on occasion. Darvish being one down in Texas. But then he goes in somewhat of a windup before he delivers the baseball. Breaking ball down the line. Flaherty with a diving stop. Gets up, gets rid of the ball quickly. Trout lays it out for an infield base hit. Buck Showalter standing up. All right, wait to see if he gets a, a replay call from his guys down at the clubhouse. It looks like he's going to go out and check. This ball, this is a nice play by Flaherty. Not only was he able to on the backhand, but get up quickly and quickly throw the ball across the diamond. Looks like he beat it out. Yep. The ball bounced twice, and on that second hop, it looked like when that foot touched yeah, the base. Yeah, foot's on the base before the ball is in the glove. Showalter back to the dugout. Infield base hit for Trout. Dauber will battle the man on. And Tillman, extremely difficult to steal a base against. Has not allowed a stolen base this season. And that's an 125 innings pitch. Albert drives into the alley in right center field. Marquez is not going to get there. That is off the wall. Trout almost the third already being waved in. He will score easily. One nothing Angels on the Pujols double. And I think the reason why you saw Gary D. Sarcina sending Trout home because Marquez played this ball well off the wall. He was throwing the ball into second base. And when that ball came into that second base back, that's when he sent him home and Trout could score. 
when we talked about looking away, and that's what Paul Holtz did. He crushes this ball off the wall, but played well by Marcakis and gets it in quickly. He has the baseball in his hands, throwing it in when Trout's barely getting the third base, but because the throws in at the base, that allowed Gary DeSarcina to send Mike Trout home. My assumption on the double, but Pujols just a single. 66th run batted in, jumping on that first pitch. Here's Hamilton. And he'll take a slow breaking ball for a strike. Albert picking up his 21st double of the season. 22 RBI in the last 24 games for Albert. And that's the swing you have to have against Tillman. Fastball off the plate. Evens up the count at one ball, one strike. Albert now with 545 career doubles. 28th all time. Next up, Manny Ramirez, now minor league hitting coach. 547. Josh hitting 293. Five home runs, 28 runs batted in. In the hole at uh, one ball, two strikes. And again, I said double again. My assumption. His next double will be yes. His five hundred. Thinking enough. ahead, I like that positive 45. thought. But that was played so well off the wall by Marcakis, and he has nine outfield assists. It was a decision, a smart decision by Pools not to go. Little dribbler to the right side. Looks like JJ Hardy bobbles it, and he's not going to have a play. It's going to be a bang bang play too. A lot of traffic there with the overshift on, with the scope coming in Hardy, and then you also have Pools. In the baseline, there. and you also have Tillman cut in front. Slow roller, Tillman going after the baseball. Hardy going in on the baseball scope there, and Pujols also couldn't get the handle of the ball. As he's looking up, the transfer unable to get a grip of the baseball. A break for the Angels. Infield base hit for uh, Hamilton. Take that back. It's an error on Hardy. His 10th this season. The Orioles have played good defensive baseball this year. Now they're 47th there. So Ibar will bow with two men on and one out. Infield base hit, the single off the wall. Now the error by Hardy in the overshift. Eric chasing the changeup. Snowballs a strike. Halos last night 0 for 3 with men in scoring position. Just 3 for 13 in the series. They had a better shot to two nights ago. So they went 3 for 10. But only able to score twice. That was a game started by Bud Norris. That's the one thing the Angels have done really well over the last uh, month and a half. Man in scoring position, little bouncer over to first. Davis has it. Nybar retired for the second out. My Hyundai key for the game tonight against the O's. Will Leonard Skinner, simple man, simplifying that approach at the plate. Important. You saw that result from Albert Pujols going the other way. Baltimore's pitchers have really pounded the outside corner. Try to pull that baseball. You're not going to be successful. Simplify your approach. Go back up the middle the other way. Here's Howie Kendrick. A little bouncer to short. Breaking ball. Hardy's got it. And here it comes to an end. A, a lot of stuff happening here, but the Angels manage just one run. But it's a good thing. It's a lead for the first time in this series after one. It's one nothing Halos.
Back in the dugout after the third out, Albert Pujols and uh, Mike Sosha. Dino Evo talking things over after that play. Yeah, you can see Mike Sosha saying he fielded that ball right off the wall and fired it right towards second base. Very difficult for Albert to go for a double on that, especially when you think in terms of a bigger first inning. And because of that throw to second base, Mike Trout was able to go around the bases that quickly. It took him 10 seconds to score from first on that single by it. Albert Pujols. Great read. As that ball went off the bat by Trout and a great read by Pools too. Seen that ball going to second. We've seen Albert at times become uh, overly aggressive on the base pass, slamming all the brakes. Nelson Cruz, the DH, be followed by Chris Davis and JJ Hardy. So that pitch misses down and away. One ball, one strike on Cruz, hitting 279, 28 home runs, 74 runs batted in. One for three last night with a double and a run scored. Two hits in the series. He had a single Monday night. It's two balls, one strike. Jared with a one, two, three first. A couple of pop ups and a ground up. Everything happening on the infield. Jammed up. This was popped up. Foul territory effort. Navarro calling for it. All the way. Hey, folks, tomorrow the Angels will host singles night. It's finally here. Tigers in town for the first of four. And that game time is at 7.05 for only $24. You can receive a game ticket admission to a pregame mixer. $10 in Angels Bucks drink specials and a chance to meet your match. For more info and to purchase tickets, visit angels.com slash singles. Sweet mustache on that baseball. Yeah. Right. That might work. Right. If you show up with that mustache, it's almost guaranteed. I think in a day. Look at the Hall of Famer Raleigh Fingers mustache working. Yeah. Or like you're working at a soda fountain back in Norm Peters days. Growing up as a child at the pharmacy. <laughs> Five and dime. <laughs> Five and dime. <laughs> Woolworths. <laughs> yes. No two count on Davis. The first baseman hitting 201. 16 home runs. 50. Runs batted in. Upstairs with a fastball. One and two. Davis, 16 home runs, those 50 runs batted in, but just a 201 batting average. Spent some time with the DL earlier this year with a uh, right oblique string. Some say that that uh, is the issue. The other, perhaps, maybe the big. Payday out in the offseason. That's a cold strike here on the inside corner. We went right back in there, too, after he missed the previous pitch. Boy, his fastball tonight and his confidence with his fastball has been very solid early on for Weaver. Fastball in the pitch before, could have got that call, came right back inside upper part of the strike zone at 88, freezes Davis. And again, it has not been the, the fact that the Orioles have come in here and just boat race the Angels. Uh, and hits all over the place. They had uh, what six hits two nights ago seven hits last night The long ball has been the one that's uh, really hurt this ball club and that's something that the Orioles are known for First with 122 home well, runs. That's always been Baltimore's way to score runs good defense great pitching in the three-run home run from back in Earl Weaver's days Oh one to Hardy is cut on and lifted to shallow center Mike Trout comes in very quick and economical. One, two, three, second for Jared Weaver. We'll head to the bottom of the inning. Bottom third of the order coming up to the Angels.
check out the big news from around the majors on the Carl's Jr. Sports update. There was near perfection today in Major League Baseball on the mound. And a club that was reeling before the All-Star break sweeps away a very close opponent at home. Looking forward to it. I bet you are. Do you have an update perhaps on another reliever being traded? Potentially. Potentially. David Freeze takes outside. Freeze. Navarro and Iannetta. I'm just going to bring you along slowly. When's that, uh, when's that update so I can uh, set the alarm? Probably around the sixth inning. Okay. David Freeze cuts through that one. And it's one ball, one strike. A lot of off-speed pitches already for Tillman, especially with men in scoring position. We saw that in the first inning. Ivar slow ground ball to first. Howie chasing a breaking ball. Now David cutting through the off-speed. 1-1 one, one pitch. He's in at the knees, 1-2. and two. Freeze hitting 250, five home runs, 33 runs batted in. A couple of walks last night. Ended up going 0 for 1. Three walks in the series. It's up the count of two balls, two strikes. Richard Tillman, it's also a modified windup. Joe Nathan kind of does something similar with nobody on base, doesn't he? And, it, and it's odd because it allows him to be, stay balanced, though. Three shoots one foul. Cal remains even. And a lot of times, even when you're in you know, the lowest forms of the middle league, when you're 8 to 10 years old, in those times where you, you want pitchers is to be able to throw strikes. And what you'll see is, is pitching coaches at that level want the kids to pitch out of the stretch to be more consistent in his own. Breaking ball. This one's bounced towards second. Scope has it. One away. He'll bring up Pepper tomorrow. Four consecutive ground balls by uh, for Stellan. Hamilton's was a ground ball. Hardy got charged with the error. Tenth of the year. But the Halo's unable to capitalize. Navarro at 310 average. His eight doubles at five runs batted. It had a two for three game yesterday as the uh, starting left fielder. Pulls this one foul and right there at the legs of Alfredo Griffin. Wise man. Yeah, getting a little grief by that Baltimore dugout. He said, hey, you used to have great hands back in the day. What a what? When you look at the percentages of the pitches that Tillman throws, there's a little over 16% of his pitches are curveballs, 15% changeups, and 5% Cut fastball, so he will pitch a lot of his all speed pitches during the course of a game. Right on cue. One and two. And he goes down chasing the high fastball. First strike out of the nine for Tillman, two down. Yeah, high fastball could be effective for Tillman because of the curveball comes from that same arm slot. Not a lot of wasted energy. Does a good job as far as keeping his front shoulder in and eyes on the target. Goes upstairs with a fastball, gets a swing and miss. That was set up because of that very good curveball. Great balance on the pitching rubber. Works downhill very effectively and over the front leg in good balance. Chris Ionetta looks at a strike. Chris getting the strike behind the dish, hitting 267 on the year. Got a tough home stand, 0 for 7. Also back off the mask of Humley. It's an 0 2 count.
Two quick outs for Tillman. One nothing Angels. RBI single by Pujols scoring Trout. One ball, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Third start of his career against the Angels for Tillman. He's down low, full count. Two and no record of 1.84 ERA. First two strikes. 16 game winner last year, 33 strikes. When you look at stuff as far as a starting pitcher on this Baltimore club, you look at Tillman as the guy with the best stuff on the staff. And he lays off, and it's a two out walk. First one issued by the big right hander. See where this pitch is located. It's off the outside corner. And consistently trying to hit that spot all three games of the series for Baltimore. That ball went through the uh, the webbing of Nick Hunley's glove, so he's back to the dugout to get a new mitt. And that feels good when you're on the mound and you can do that to a catcher's mitt. That means you, you think, at least. You got a pretty good fastball work. Until the catcher tells you he's had that putt since uh, he was in high school. <laughs> it was his lucky glove. As long as you don't have that silencer glove out there. That's the worst. catcher, yes. And right through. And hits the chest protector. You don't see that all that often. Right through. Webbing and off the chest. I'm, I'm still feeling pretty good about that if I'm on the mound. <laughs> Even though it could be 83, but I'm still <laughs> feeling good. Cole takes downstairs. Yeah, the old silencer bit. Those are yeah, they're fun. They're, uh, it has nothing to do with the glove either. It's, <laughs> it's the individual. <laughs> exactly. You could you could be in the uh, in the most uh, acoustically perfect bullpen, and if the guy doesn't catch the ball properly, it's just a big. It's like a ball hitting a pillow. Not the big pop that you want to hear no. before the game, too. No, you need started? that. One out. It's fouled back. Boy, the one visitor bullpen mound that I, I've always loved when I mean, you can hear the sound is Dodger Stadium. When you're a visitor warming up in the bullpen, you feel like you're throwing 100 miles an hour every single pitch. The sound off the mitt. And then, of course, you get out there and you've given up five runs in the first inning, and that didn't really help you a whole lot. But warming up, you felt good. They have like a metal. Yeah, it's all, it's all right. around her. Yeah. Calhoun 0 for 1 and a bouncer back to the mound of the first. 1 1 pitch. Break the ball. Missing outside. Two balls, one strike. One strike out, one walk, two hits allowed. Scoring in the first inning, travel with an infield base hit, and then Pujols in a rocket off the wall at right. Played perfectly by Marquez, holding Albert to a single, but Trout scored from first. Two on now. It's fouled back. Still pretty amazing that Trout's able to score from first on a, a line drive off the wall by Pujols. How quick he is, how good he is as far as cutting the angle of the bases to shorten up the distance. Uh, no hesitation. I think that's just uh, see the ball off the bat. You look over your right shoulder, see where the outfielder's playing, and you're gone. That's ten just, ten seconds to make it around. Put the uh, the afterburners on. Two two now. This one's pulled into right field. A base hit. I got We'll stop at second. Kinkus gets the baseball back. Yeah, travel back here. Two out walk to Chris, and now the single by Cole brings up Mike. Still like to see Trout at some point uh, go for the uh, inside the park home run. Kind of like uh, to me that gorgeous one in Minnesota yes. a couple years ago. Yes. Was it a couple years ago or last April? <laughs> Just feels like a couple years ago. I think it was a couple years ago, but how quick Trout is. Not even a real big lead, but reads that off the wall. 
And he's cutting around. He's picking up Gary DeSarcina at third base. Coach is back down the line. He's sending him home, and he slides in easily with the first run and only run of the game. And that ball was scolded off the wall by Pujols. Yet he was able to score from first. 71st run of the year scored by Trout. And a pickoff attempt, and uh, I had it picked off. Uh, you don't want to do that, especially with Mike Trout at the plate. That is just bad base running right there as Trout stranded in the batter's box. We talked about how hard it is to even get any kind of a lead against Tillman. That's a perfect timing play for the pickoff. Photo of the game. Oh, we need your help. Tweet us your photo using hashtag WestFanPhoto. It could be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Jonathan Scope, the second baseman, looks at a strike. Native of Curacao, homered last night, his eighth of the year. Two road shot. All three of those runs in the sixth inning by Baltimore. It's Mike Bourne as the breaking ball misses down and away. As we pointed out last night, uh, all eight of his home runs on the road against right handed pitcher. And likes to get his arms extended on pitches that are elevated. 1 1 pitch. Just off the plate, another breaking ball. It's two balls and one strike. Let's go put one. Two for four last night with a single and net home run. A couple of strikeouts. Jammed him. This was popped up to shallow right field. What a way. All right, folks, on Friday, the Angels take on the Tigers at 7.05, and fans in attendance will receive an Angels Hawaiian shirt, courtesy of Experian, while supplies last. Purchase your tickets today at angels.com or by swinging by the Angel State ticket office. You can wear this to your, uh, your next luau. Yes. And stand out. Just like that, yes. Young man, right there, or that young man. Those don't say angels across the chest. Those. This one's hooked into the right field corner. First pitch swinging by Flaherty. And it bounces into the seats. So Flaherty, the first base run of the game for Baltimore, seventh double of the year. He's able to get an elevated pitch and turned on it. Looking for patterns from Weaver, seeing Weaver throwing a lot of first pitch fastballs and a lot of strikes. Double by uh, Flaherty, snapping an 0 for 9. Man in scoring position for Nick Huntley, the former Padre. 
to 21 average with a couple of home runs and 10 runs batted in. Probably had the start uh, two nights ago behind the plate, but opened three with three strikeouts. Picked up at a trade with the Padres on May 24th in exchange for pitcher Troy Patton. Swing and a miss. Second round pick at 05 by the Padres. You never see of Arizona. Some that have gone to that school call that the, the Harvard of the West. Yes. Rumor has it. This was lifted to right. Calhoun is there. Clarity. Back to second to tag up. Here comes the throw from Calhoun and oh man, and Freeze hangs onto it. I think they get him. It's going to be a real close yeah. play as he came off the bag for a second. Great throw by Cole Calhoun. Two outs. Looked like Tom Halley was in position. He had his eye on that glove and tag, and Flaherty a third. Strong throw from Calhoun right on the base. Really had to handle the baseball though. A short hop. Went off the heel of the glove. And he's going to be off the base. If he has that baseball in the glove, he's going to be out. Calhoun with six outfield assists this season so far. Marcakis looks at a slow curveball for a strike. He popped up to uh, Chris Sinet at the first. I was surprised Flaherty was drifting off before he went back yeah. to the base to begin with. It's almost like a. Uh, Realize how deep that fly ball was. Just off the plate. Because as a pitcher, you would love a runner at second as compared to third. It allows you that opportunity if you get ahead of the count. You could bounce a breaking ball, but with the man on third, you're not you're more apt to make sure it's close enough to the strike zone. Working from the full windup to one pitch. That one was up a little bit. And it's two balls, two strikes. He got away with that high breaking ball. Flaherty with a one out double standing at third base. Move there on the fly ball out by Hundley. 2 2 on the way. Off speed, foul back. Halos in the third. We'll have Trout, Pujols, and Hamilton coming up as Chris goes out there. Yeah. Trout was at the plate when Ionetta was picked off to finish off the second. And there's been a couple good swings by Marquez on a curveball and a changeup. Try to sneak that fastball on the inside part of the yeah, play. Try that no seam fastball, but you got to make sure you pitch inside with conviction on that one. If you miss, you miss off the inside corner. Now to out over the plate. And going back outside. That's with the fastball. And a defensive swing, so maybe, maybe he was looking at something inside as well. At 90 miles an hour, good movement, good location. One strike out, one hit allowed for Weaver. David Lowe, the left fielder on deck. This one's pulled through the right side, a base hit. Tied at one. Trying to come inside, and Marquez picks up his 33rd run batted in. So he tried that no seam fastball, but it got too much of the plate and just got it by Howie. So by the, the movement on this pitch for Weaver. 
Round out over the plate. Is he able to get his hands extended enough to get it by Howie being elevated? Still the right pitch for Weaver. Just didn't locate it exactly where he wanted it to. Yeah. So 1-1 tie here in the third with two outs. Low the left fielder. Grounded out to freeze his first time up. That's through. Fouls back the first one. Low last year played at 96 games for the Royals at 286 for them. Swings through the break the ball. Had 335 plate appearances last year for Kansas City. Pretty good defender in the outfield, real good speed. Finished eighth, the rookie of the year balloting. 0 oh, 2. Upstairs, fastball. One ball, two strikes. JB Shuck of the Angels last year finishing fifth. Will Myers, of course, winning the award. I mean, at some point soon, Will Myers is due back for Tampa and the way they're playing. They're, uh, they're going to be a threat in that division now. One two pitch low skies went out toward right center field trout looks like he's tracking it down calls off Calhoun and it comes to an end but Baltimore ties it up at one as we hit the bottom of the third trout Pujols Hamilton coming up boy some serious threats in the lineup here for the halos to meet of the order for Mike Sosha. Tied and one. It's National Hot Dog and uh, Sausage Day, so they got the uh, the dogs out on the grill, and uh, we walk into our broadcast booth, and uh, those on the grill look uh, a lot better than the tired little hot dogs we got here in the booth. Oh, they look good to me. Do you? Yes. All right, go ahead, crush one. No, right now on camera, in between no, innings. No, the folks at home want to see you in between innings, just they in case <laughs> I have something important to say, which happens every once in a while. Yeah, it's just trout batting. Go ahead, <laughs> eat. You got plenty yeah. of time. Oh, yeah. Take some 10 seconds to run around the bases. <laughs> two, three, and four coming up uh, for the Angels here to face Chris Tailman, who uh, gave up a two out walk and then a single to Calhoun before uh, Ineta got to picked off at second. First pitch, off speed, down the way. Trout at infield base hit with a run scored at the first. Fouls this off to the right. One ball, one strike. 
crowd still uh, coming to the ballpark. This is, of course, Beach Week. Beach blankets today. Good luck, too. Yes. Two balls, one strike. Home run that Trout hit last night, 24th of the year. Now with 76 runs batted in. Second in the American League to Miguel Cabrera at the start of the day. Trout fourth at home runs. Cuts through that one. Two balls, two strikes. Well, that fastball is right down the heart of the plate. A lot of times as a hitter, you'll miss that because you're looking maybe to catch something off speed. Two two now. This one's popped up on the first base side, headed toward the seats behind the Orioles dugout. Now, the Orioles fans here up first two games of the series. We've heard them once again through the national anthem. They've got their run on the board at the top of this inning. That is popped up on the left side. Flaherty, the third baseman, calling for it. One away. Boy, Pujols his last of that against Tillman. What a perfect swing he had on him. Line drive right off the right center field wall. On a pitch away. 22 RBI in his last 24 games. 1,564 of his career as far as RBI for Albert Pujols. Sixty-six runs batted in for Albert. This one pulled down a lot. Flair can't get him. There's your double. I told you it was happening. I think. Here comes the throw from low, and Albert in there. Late slide, though. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, that's one of those slides, too, when you slide that late in the base. no give. 21st double for Pujols. Right down the line. Line drive off the wall in right center. Line drive right down the third baseline for Pujols. So far tonight. Boy, that slide just as he got towards the base. It looked initially like he was going to try to stand up, but then forced because of that strong throw from low and left. It's a couple away from Manny Ramirez for 26 in the all-time doubles list. Hamilton hits one out the center, playable for Jones. A little bit of a stutter step for Adam. Puts it away for round number two. Josh over two, reached out the air by Harding in the first of it. So Albert still in scoring position for Eric Ibar. 50 RBI season for Eric. 0 for 1 tonight with a ground ball to first. Long look back by Tillman. This is down and away. Angels with a run of the first inning on the Pujols single. 
Baltimore tying it up. The RBI is single by Nick Marcakis. This one to the right side. Nice play by Scope. Spins around, fires the first, and Ibar retired. And Alberts, one out double, stranded at second base. We'll head to the fourth, still tied at one. with Stand Up to Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. For more information, just visit foxsportsupports.com. Jared Weaver back to work here at the top of the fourth inning in a 1-1 tie. He'll face 3-4-5, and five. Jones, Cruz, and Davis. Two hits allowed, one strikeout, no walks. Now Jones popped out to Howie Kendrick. His first inning at bats, he's 0 for 1. Shows Bond, and uh, well, that's a pretty good pitch. Yeah, it looked like it got the lower part of the strike zone. Looks like how Gibson gave up on the pitch when he saw Jones bring the bat back when he was thinking about attempting to bunt. Yeah, that got the lower part of the strike zone. Again, it's not where Ionetta catches the ball, it's when it crosses the plate. Jones skies went out to deep left. Josh Hamilton moving back on it. Makes the catch on the track. That time of night, though, I thought for a second that Hamilton lost sight of the baseball. He was drifting back, and it looked like he was having a tough time tracking it initially. And they knew he had it all the way. High fastball. Got his arms extended. Trouble in Baltimore, that's for sure. That's what's, next week. What's that, 364 the power alley in left center field? Just let it go, man. No. You haven't been a pitcher in the big leagues for years. Let it go. Uh, I can't believe I still remember it's 364. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. <laughs> I'm convinced up. it's 350, actually. <laughs> I actually walked it off, believe it or not. I said that's not 364. Take your uh, your laser finder off your golf bag. Take it with you on the trip. Oh, yeah. uh, well, that means we've got to convert it. <laughs> you saw my golf clubs. They're about 100 years old. Cruz popped up his first time up. Foul territory. The Angels will uh, take on the Orioles Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at Camden Yards next week. Not an easy trip. Three at Baltimore. Three at Tampa. Two at Dodger Stadium before returning home to take out the Dodgers for two. 
start off a quite a stand. really tough stretch of games starting off in the second half of the season when you think about it Seattle Baltimore Detroit back against Baltimore Tampa who's red hot and then the Dodgers one ball two strikes a couple of long trips too for the Angels here in the second half just is what it is one two now Cruz fouls it off to the right After this uh, road trip, Dodgers, Red Sox, Phillies for two. And back out on the road, Texas, Boston for four, and Oakland for three. Especially four night games in Boston yeah. to fly across the country to play Oakland the very next day. That always makes sense. But historically, under Mike Sosha, the club has always played well against the best teams in baseball. You look over the years that Mike Sosha has been the manager here. The club has played outstanding baseball against the very best teams. Full count. But you look at the month of September, too, for the Angels, aside from the four game set in Minnesota, and then you've got that makeup game Monday the 8th against Cleveland. All American League West. 3 2. Swing and a miss. Jack goes Cruz. Two outs. Boy, challenge. I like what I saw from Weaver on that fastball. Went upstairs at 88. Swing and miss after some slow pitches prior to that to Nelson Cruz. 88 mile an hour four seam fastball upstairs. Gets it by a very good fastball hitter in Cruz. Cruz now 15 for 68. His career versus Weaver. Davis waving at the off speed pitch. Struck out looking into second. Handles with four hits, Orioles with two. Both coming in the third inning. Davis fouls this one back. Boy, fortunately for a fan of the front row of the club seat, she just matrixed out of the way of that ball at the last minute. Oh, two now. Swing and a miss. Dad goes Davis, a one, two, three inning for Jared Weaver. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth here at Angel Stadium, tied at one. Sports 1 is Bryce Harper. The Nationals take on the Reds, followed by the Indians scoring off against Salvador Perez and the Royals. Coverage begins at 1230 Pacific on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. 
Two strikeouts in the fourth inning for Weaver. Three in the game. Tyler Guano speaking the bottom of the fourth inning. Catcher frees in the borrow. Do up for the Angels against Chris Telma. Yeah, so often, Vic, we talk about Weaver's curveball and changeup. But his fastball has been extremely effective tonight. Now, what he does better than anybody, once he senses that the, the hitters are starting to time his fastball, that's when he starts throwing his curveball and changeup more. But his fastball so far, very solid. Howie 0 for 1. He grounded to short his first time up at the end of the first inning. Leaving up the count. Going to be 378 in the month of July. 28 for 74. Prior to his first inning at bat. So his average started at the day at uh, 293. This after 232 in the month of June. He's been scorched hot here at Hall, too. Downstairs. Three balls, one strike, and they continue to pitch him away. And, and Howie is so effective when they try to pitch him middle, middle away. I think if you're going to try to throw a fastball in on him, it has to be at least above the belt. He's pretty good going inside out on a fastball down and in, also. Ground ball to second. Scope's got it to the backhand. One away. Fast groups of 20 are working to join Angels baseball for as low as $8 per seat this year. Take advantage of the exclusive group hat collection for select series. To book your group outing today, call 888-7968 or log on at angels.com slash groups. Boy, Scope has shown some pretty good range at second base. He's a tall second baseman. Because the backhand, very solid to the glove side, also with his range. Yep, sixth ground ball out for Chris Tillman, facing David Freeze. Who takes outside. David grounded out to Scope, leading off to second. Richard Tillman out of Fountain uh, Valley High School. Second round pick by Seattle in 06. Fouled off to the right, then got traded. And they, uh, I guess it turned out to be a fairly one-sided trade to Baltimore with the Seattle Mariners. That was the Eric Bedard trade. It also included Adam Jones, the center fielder, and at the time George Sherrill, who ended up having a couple of pretty good seasons with Baltimore. The All-Star team was a closer. Yeah. It's one ball, two strikes now. Fountain Valley High School baseball team has always been very good. Breaking pitch over the scope. Two outs. That's three ground balls in a row that the scope has made the play on now for Tillman. Two quick outs for Tillman. Four in the row retired since the double by Pujols through the third, and here comes the bottom. Effort struck out on a high fastball his first time up. The only strikeout Tillman has recorded tonight. Two starts in left for Navarro, then uh, tonight at first base. Albert serving as a DH. One ball, one strike. One one now. He tried to wait back on that slow breaking ball.
Last night, almost uh, just over 39,000. Last night, 35,000. We're back in the uh, upper 30s tonight. Yeah, good crowd. Navarro goes down, swing out of the breaking ball. Tillman returns the favor as he retires the Angels in order. We'll head to the fifth, still tied at one. the box of new jalapeno rancher barbecue ultimate cheeseburgers by time warner cable enjoy better by the 2014 camry at your toyota dealer today we make it easy and by at&t mobilizing your world tied at one here the uh, top of the fifth inning angels with a run the first inning baltimore tying it up in the third near the fifth it'll be hardy scope and flirty fish jared weaver 52 pitches, 35 of its strikes. Make that 53 and 36 now. Hardy a fly ball to center field that ended the second. A couple of doubles last night for JJ. Two runs batted in and a run scored. This one's out to left. Just got in enough on him. That ball had some carry. And there's out number one. Boy, off the bat, you can tell by the reaction from the hitter sometimes. He made a mistake. He was hoping that somehow that the hitter didn't quite square it up. And I think that was the case right there as Hamilton got back to the warning track and made the play. But Weaver thought he made a mistake and Harvey Hardy didn't quite get it. So it brings up Jonathan Scope. Well, interesting thing as far as Buck Schoeller, where the bunch just line up together. Cruz, Davis, and Hardy combined 23 for 120 in their careers against Weaver. Usually Buck likes to separate guys that have struggled against a certain pitcher, but they're all together bunched up. The batting average is barely over 190. As you pointed out, he is a... This one's fouled off the right. Attention to detail. There's nothing that really gets by Buck Showalter. Seldom does it ever get by him. I mean, they're very good hitters, but they struggle against Weaver, and he's got them bunched all together as a pitcher. And you know that. You're well aware against hitters that have struggled against you. It's kind of a, gives you a little bit of a breather knowing that if you can get through, say, Adam Jones, who has decent numbers against Weaver, you're in a position to get through an inning without too much damage done. Off the end of the bat to short. Ibar's got it. Turned out. The thing, too, about Buck is, uh, as you pointed out, is the fact that he, uh, one of those guys that is willing to try new things. Of course, he's been managing now for a while, and uh, the knock on him early on was that he was too uptight. He was too focused on attention to detail, and I think he's 
loosened the reins a little bit uh, since his days, maybe with New York, uh, even with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He was a little bit better in Texas. I got a chance to spend some time with him in Texas, but now, especially as a member of the Orioles, he's a. Uh, well, he's, he's definitely re relaxed. Yeah. And there's no one funnier than him, too, when yeah. you get a chance to talk to him. He's been very good, and he's very detailed as far as getting his club in position to win games. His career wins amongst active managers. Only Mike Sosha and Bruce Bochy have won more. I know. One of the uh, smartest baseball guys I've been around, that's for sure. A conversation with uh, Gary Thorne. Longtime television voice of the Orioles today talking about Buck. He says, You want to know what uh, attention to detail is for Buck Showalter? They were doing something in his first year when he took over. They were doing it down in the clubhouse. It was going to be on camera. And Gary said, Why don't we do it here? There was a big picture of Camden Yards in the background. It was perfect. Buck said, If we're going to do it here, let's get this done now because that picture's not going to be here tomorrow. Gary says, What are you talking about? It's a great picture of Camden Yards. He says, have you seen that picture? Have you looked at that picture? This one's playable for Trout. And Gary Thorne says, yeah, I've looked at the picture. It's a great picture. Great crowds on hand. He goes, yeah, but the opposing team has the bases loaded against the Orioles. <laughs> Next day, that, that picture is, was that gone. Is, that is a plus. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth, still tied at one. Hey, today's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces, serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, Japan. We thank you for your service, and we welcome you to our broadcast. Halo's trying to snap a uh, mini two-game losing streak. First time they've lost a back-to-back -back home game since May 6th, May 7th against the Yankees. Chris Sinetta leading things off. Fouls off the first pitch. Sinetta, Calhoun, and Trout for the Angels here at the fifth. Delman had himself a 1 2 3 fourth of the second strikeout. Both of his strikeouts tonight have been against Efren Navarro. Four hits allowed, one walk. The walk to Ionetta in the second with two outs. Chris takes off the plate. Game up in uh, Oakland at the Coliseum. Athletics leading the Astros five to nothing. That game's the bottom of the fourth inning. Jesse Chavez on the mound for the A's. This one's pulled to third. Flaherty has it. No Springer in the lineup for the Astros either. He's dealing with uh, discomfort in his right knee and a uh, left quad issue as well. Tigers in town beginning tomorrow night. A four-game series. Max Scherzer. It's Garrett Richards. Pretty good pitching matchup to kick off that four game set. Of course, the, uh, the Tigers were getting close to that sixth inning. Looks like they have a new arm in their bullpen. Yes. But we'll tell you more about that later on. 
Well, Garrett, last time out, didn't he face King Felix? Both 11 game winners, both threw the ball well in that game. Scherzer with 150 strikeouts this season. Richards, 134. I think Jared Weaver has uh, secretly manipulated the uh, rotation. He said, you know what? I've been here long enough. I've been locked up with these guys since I got here. You know what? Young guy, you yeah. take it now. <laughs> Veteran. Exactly. Calhoun fouls it off, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Cole, one for two. A ground ball back to the mound of the first and a single to right of the second. Talk about star power in that game. You got Scherzer going against Richards, and you got Cabrera going against Kraut. Serious talent. Tigers picked up their 56th win today, defeating the Diamondbacks in Phoenix. Kansas City won. They're back to 500 at 50 and 50. They defeated the White Sox. Two balls and a strike on Calhoun. Look, uh, Cleveland trailing Minnesota. Cleveland in second place in the Central, five and a half games back. And Minnesota won that game. They won that game finally. Yep, three to one. So Cleveland now was six and a half back. Kansas City remains seven. Two one now. Off the plate. Three and one. And right now, Cole's going to look for a fastball in the inner half of the plate. Tillman knows who's on deck. He doesn't want to take that chance of giving a free pass to Calhoun, so he's more than likely going to get a fastball. Cole bounces this one to the right side. Davis has it go in and out of his glove. Tillman's covering, and he drops the baseball. It's up in between hop for Davis. Knocks it down, but still they have a play at first base. And it's Tillman trying to find the bag at first. Unable to make the play. A good hustle by Davis. Pretty good feed. Looked like Tillman took his eye off the baseball as he's reaching back and trying to maintain contact with his foot and the base to get Calhoun at first. Just took the eye off the baseball. Tillman gets uh, charged with the error. Second multi-error game on this road trip. They had a three-error game against the Athletics last weekend. Trout looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Mike and infield base hit a run score to the first. Popped out to Flaherty, the third baseman in the third. Very good lead for Calhoun at first. And not an easy task to even think about trying to steal a base against Tillman. Mentioned no stolen base against him this year. Last year, just one stolen base and nine caught stealing. Or eight caught stealing against Tillman. Nine attempts, one stolen base. Very quick times to the plate. Also has a quick pickoff move. One one down low back to back fastballs Two balls one strike The oh, whole saw deck out with a couple of hits tonight Yeah, you could still put a hit and run on against him especially because he's a guy that throws a lot of strikes generally Back-to-back three-ball counts to uh, Calhoun and now Trout. 75 pitches thrown by Tillman. 45 have been strikes.
Three one. The strike even with Huntley reaching back across. Yeah, that caught the strike zone, but a lot of times you don't get that call when the catcher reaches back like that. He's setting up inside, well inside Huntley, and that caught, caught a lot of the strike zone. So full count. Do you start Calhoun? No. There's the payoff. Cole takes off. The pitch is low. The reason why I say no is because I want Pujols the way he swung the bat today, just in case the swing and miss. And now it's time for Tools of the Trade, presented by Ram Trucks. With the speed on the base, and Mike Trout back at first. The last time Pujols had an opportunity to drive him in, he drove him in from first base. The line drive off the wall, the read off the wall by Trout, and then turns on the afterburner, picks up Gary D. Sarcina, and comes all the way around from first. First run of the game. Ten seconds it took Mike Trout to score. Now we're two for two. That single off the wall, double down the left field line. With that said, the Angels still looking for their first hit with a man in scoring position. Tied at one. Goes with an off speed pitch. Double for Albert is 21st. The RBI in the first inning is 66th. And yeah, both hits on fastballs for Paul Wolf's. Right center field off the wall, and then a double down the left field line. This time Tillman starts him off with his slow curveball. Halo's three for 20 in this series of men in scoring position. Another breaking ball. And we saw that back in the first inning from Tillman. After the uh, single by Pujols and the error by Hardy. And a couple of men on base. Ivar got an off speed pitch for the man in scoring position. Pulled it to first. And now he has a slow curveball. Grounded out there in the inning. That's his go to pitch in stressful situations. Good curveball that he has. Also his changeup. One ball, one strike with one out. Bottom of the fifth inning. Angels with a run of the first. Baltimore tying it up in the third. Great speed on the bases for the Angels. Breaking ball, little dribble on the left side. Flair, he's got it on the grass. Throws out Pujols for the second out. Runners advance 90 feet. Calhoun the third, Trout the second. Now Hamilton coming up. All three pitches, curveballs against Bulls and at a bat. Well, that one was a hanging breaking ball. He got away with it, Tillman did. But the speed was good to get Albert out in front. Hamilton 0 for 2, an error. That's how he reached in the first inning, and a fly ball to center to third. Flair to the lone infielder on the left side. Calhoun about halfway between third and home. You want to talk about uh, a lead and secondary lead. With Flaherty playing at the shortstop position, Calhoun goes far off the base as he would like. Well, it allows him, if there's anything in the dirt at all, it doesn't have to get that far away from Hundley to be able to try and score on it. As long as you can beat the pitcher back to third base, make as big as lead as possible. This one's out to center, off the end of the bat. The Angels will uh, remain hitless with men in scoring position tonight. We've played five, still tied at one.
timeless moment with Weaver on the mound back in 2006. Jared Weaver beat Kansas City to start his career off with a 7-0 mark. His first to win his first seven career starts since Fernando Valenzuela did in 1981. That great screwball that Fernando had. Back to work in the top of the sixth inning to face nine, one, and two. Hodley, Marcakis, and Lowe. Three punch outs, no walks, two hits allowed. Hodley a fly ball to right, third inning. We'll take that slow breaking ball for a strike. It's the battle of uh, slow breaking pitches tonight. It's been effective for Tillman in crucial situations. This one's popped up behind the plate. What a one. Eleven fly ball outs. For Weaver. Five to infielders. Tells you excellent all speed pitch. Occasionally jamming pitcher uh, hitters with fastballs in. Pitch speed range, best fastball at 90 miles an hour, slowest curveball at 68. That's 22 mile an hour differential in between his best fastball and slowest curve. Off-speed pitch for a strike on Nick Markakis. The right fielder's one for two. RBI single in the third. 33rd run batted it. Orioles with a run on two hits, two errors, one man left on. The Angels a run, four hits, six men left on base. That's on the inside corner. Body language says that uh, Marquez does not agree. It touches that inside corner at 86. Bouncer toward the right side. How he's got it. Nasty pitch, too, by Weaver. Hard breakdown at it. Good slider. Folks, follow every Angel game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio free MLB.tv game of the day. And Gooby's favorite. More. More. Download the App Store or log on at Angels.com today. You dropped it on the ice cream clerk all the time. The basket around us. Yes, more. more, more, please. Uh, don't be shy. This one hooked into right field. Low, out in front of the off-speed pitch. Pulls it for a two-out single as it slams on the brakes. Now potential stolen base threat at first base with two outs. Which is through the uh, first couple of games that the Orioles don't run a whole lot, but Low has good speed. Five stolen bases this year has been caught three times. Sometimes when you have two pitchers as pitching as well as they are tonight, you take those chances and try to steal the base, try to create something. 170. Check that. 96 stolen bases in his minor league career. Good lead for him. Jones, two fly ball outs, so he's over two. We were one pickoff this year. That's Springer in that game against the Astros. 19 in his career. If you figure they're going to push the envelope here, maybe you pitch out first pitch. Especially because you know Weaver can throw strikes, get back in the count, especially with all speed. 
against a fastball hitter in Jones. He might be willing to take that shot. Low doesn't go, and that pitch is outside. Throw down for my net. Not a time. So one ball, no strikes. Just off the plate. Now you're in that dangerous count that we saw last night with Adam Jones. Well, two nights ago, I should say, when he was able to get Shoemaker on 2 0 pitch. Seventy one pitches thrown by Jared. Forty seven strikes. I get the third out here, the sixth. I would caught the corner. Not your prototypical uh, two oh pitch. That's what makes Weaver special is ability to throw a slow curveball for a strike. Oh, that the ability to go uh, slow, slower, and slowest with that breaking ball as well. Low takes off the pitch, the breaking ball for a strike to throw down is uh, not in time. Sixth stolen base for Low. He's in scoring position now. Two ball, two strike count on Adam Jones. A pretty good jump, and he picked the right pitch to go on as another curveball. Quick throw for Mayaneta, but it was stolen on the pitch. You throw a third consecutive breaking ball. I, I love a, a fastball down and away right now, but I think we will probably come back with another curveball away. Two two. This one's off the end of the bat. And that's going to flare in for a single, and the Orioles are out top two to one. A Q shot single by Adam Jones picks up his 64th RBI. Flared a little change up over the head of Navarro into the outfield. Both of the hits in this inning off the end of the bat. But another two out run for Baltimore in this series. Actually, that might have even been a slider. Just off the end of the bat. Quick throw to first. Jones back in there. So two to one Orioles here in the sixth inning. Ten runs in this series, eight of which have been scored with two outs. Nelson Cruz certainly does not like that call. Let's Hal Gibson know about it. He might have been just below the strike zone according to our Fox tracks. Cruz over two, a pop up, foul territory, and a strike out of the fourth. The throw again to first base. Jones back. Jones, six stolen bases. In fact, uh, David Lowe now tied with that of Jones with a team lead. The stolen bases this year. Well, how big is that stolen base now? Because he got in a scoring position, was able to score on that little flare. Tell it too, like we talk about when you're, after you're facing two really good pitchers, sometimes you take a shot. And that's what Lowe did. He got in a scoring position.
Orioles tonight, two for three now with men in scoring position. 0 2, just off the plate. One ball, two strikes. All even in the hits column now for hits piece. The Angels in the bottom of the sixth have Ivar Kendrick and Freeze coming up against Tillman. Two two. Like nine in a row retired by Weaver since the single by Marcakis in the third, but then the uh, will flare off the end of the bat by Low. The single after the stolen base. Jones two two pitch, killing one to right. Jones takes off the breaking ball is cut on and this job goes through the inning comes to an end but not before Baltimore takes the lead on back to back two out knocks at the bottom of the six two to one Orioles. Brewers, not the brooms, sweet Cincinnati now to open up a two and a half game lead in the NL Central. Bartola Cologne retired the first 20 batters of the game against Seattle before eventually giving up and hitting a couple runs. But the Mets did beat Seattle three to two. The Tigers bolstered their bullpen. Joaquin Soria picked up in a deal with the Texas Rangers, helped fortify the bullpen, which has been an issue for the Detroit Tigers. Adam Jones putting the Orioles on top two to one with his two out single to right. Eric Guybar looks at a fastball for a strike. Guybar Kendrick and Freeze. Eric tonight 0 for 2. As a matter of fact, those three guys, Ibar Kendrick and Freeze, 0 for 6. Six ground ball outs, five of which have been to the right side of the infield. Delman 83 pitches, 48 strikes, two punch outs, two walks, and four hits allowed. Opening day started for the Orioles. No decision against the Red Sox. So it's fouled off to left. 
It shows you don't have to throw in the upper 90s to have a hitter be late on your fastball because of the ability to throw a good slow curveball like Tillman and Weaver have done tonight. That hit him. So the leadoff man on board. We we'll see if Mike Sosha does something as far as put some motion on here with Ibar going the first on a hit by pitch. And Howie coming to play who handles the bat so well. Fourth time this year that uh, Ibar's been hit for the pitch. Fourth batter that Tillman has plucked. So Howie up with a man at first base with nobody out. First time tonight, the Angels have had their leadoff man reach against Tillman. First one off the plate. Levitt stolen bases on the year for Eric. He's been caught six times. To figure it's not going to be a straight steal. Unless you're in a two-out situation. Well, he's only thrown out 14% of would-be base stealers this year, though. The Tillman gives him a great opportunity because he's so quick to the plate. Not much of a leg kick. More of a slide step towards home. Quick feet for the big man, too. Just throws to first. When the sequence fastball away, change up away. Again, that plays right in the hands of Howie Kendrick. He goes away again. You can send Eric Ibar on the move. Not a room between first and second for Howie. Now with Davis holding Ibar on. One one pitch. It's fouled back. One and two. Oh my big key to the game. Simple man, simple approach at the plate against Tillman. Watch this throughout this game. The entire series against Baltimore. They pitch away. They will change speeds, but everything is pretty much on the outer half of the plate. Spotting the fastball well, you have to go the other way. That simplified approach to the plate. So important for the Halos here to try to get back and tie this game, if not take the lead this inning. David Freeze on deck. Ibar on board. Hit by a pitch. 1 2 to Kendrick. There's no breaking ball. Slipped out of the hand. He puts up the count of two balls and two strikes. Good lead for Ibar at first base. Does not go. Breaking pitch, lifted foul and out of play. But how he tried to stay back as long as he could on that slow breaking ball. <laughs> Orioles will more than likely start to get some action going to their bullpen. 91 pitches. For Tillman. Here in the sixth of them. Guys starting to move around there. Is this one pulled through the left side of base hit? So the first two on board for the Angels to start the sixth. Another slow breaking ball over the plate. Now he made it pay for it. Well, you wonder if David Freeze. Hasn't been asked the whole line in his career to square around the bunt. Would he do so? 
two on here. Has a total of 12 in his career. Davis playing in at first. Flaherty near the cut of the grass at third. Not showing Buck takes a strike. He's twice as grounded out to Jonathan Scope, the second baseman. Oh, it too. Boy, Tillman's got a couple pitches far where Huntley's had to reach back, catch it, even though the pitch is in the strike zone. He's gotten the benefit of the call, Tillman, tonight. Doesn't happen often. One and two. The last hit the Angels have had with a man of scoring position was back in the fourth inning of Monday's game. That was Hank Conger. 0 for 10 since then. Called strike three. David doesn't even swing the bat. One out. And all four pitches. The exact same location on the outer part of the plate. Fastball away. All four pitches. Fastballs away. Got to pull the trigger with two strikes. Third strike out of the night for Tillman. I should go on the uh, Orioles pen now. Brad Brock going. First man up. Now for five tonight with men in scoring position. After Navarro for two with a couple of strikeouts. Takes outside. High bar hit by a pitch. Kendrick with a single. Still standing at first and second. With one out now. Effort now ahead of the count of two balls, no strikes. Tony Hundley was trying to set up a high target and then to set up for a end for a change up away. Is that just in case someone's peeking back? In case you're looking back as far as your, you know, you, a lot of times you see hitters, you know, with their swing to prepare, and they, every once in a while you'll look back and see where location. This one fouled off left side. And a cutter inside. So far in this game against the bar, a lot of slow stuff to him because Efren is very good as far as the fastball travel and hit the ball well to left center field. Nine to nine pitches so far by Tillman. Two balls and a strike with one out. Takes a shot. Three and one now. Chris Hynette on deck. And Hunter Pitch zone 58 strikes, 42 out of the zone. Not textbook as far as throwing a lot of strikes, but been very effective so far. Three one pitch. Efren hits one to right for the first base. It's an off the glove of Davis. Waits for Davis to get their scope backing up on the play. 
And the ball retired. And what a play by Scope to be there to back up Davis. A tricky hop. Scope not being a spectator was there in position to make a play anticipating the hop like that and then a good feed to first base. Well, Scope has played some outstanding defense in this series. Second and third now, two outs. Two to one Orioles here in the bottom of the sixth. I had a thousand back to the right. Chris with a walk. And now, go for one. Time up ground out to Flaherty. This one's in that right field. Mark Kinkus is there. And the Angels again waste another opportunity. Six complete. Baltimore still leads it two to one. Albert Pujols in the scoring goal for the Halos in the first. Scoring Mike Trout all the way from first base. Giving a one nothing lead. But Marcakis, single scoring. Clarity who doubled. Eventually Baltimore takes a lead on a slider. Pretty good pitch. And Jones flares into the outfield. Scoring low who stole second base after a single. Baltimore lead 2-1. to one. Orioles here in the seventh have Davis Harding and Scope coming up. Tillman at 103 pitches. A lot of the first two guys to reach, but the Angels unable to do anything with those two base runners except uh, move them up 90 feet. Davis twice has struck out against Weaver. That pitch just missed outside. Once looking and once swinging. Four strikeouts tonight for Weaver. One one on the way. Davis breaks his bat, loops one out to shallow right field. Calhoun will play it on the hop. Another flare hit for the Orioles. Perfectly placed by Davis. Lead off man on board. And you have to respect the power Davis of Cole Calhoun has to play deep and right. 
Change up. Shatters the bat off the end of the bat. A change up. He's strong enough to hit it far enough to get it over Howie's head, who's playing in the outfield with the shift on. So leadoff man on board, J.J. Hardy at the plate. Twice has hit a fly ball out, one to center, one to left. Over two. Fastball in there for a strike. 83rd pitch thrown by Jared. 56 of them been strikes. Angels offense uh, non existent in this series. Eight hits Monday night, managing two runs last night. Total of three hits, managing two runs. And tonight, five hits, just one run. Chopper towards third, and that's going to go foul. You can only imagine what Weaver's reaction would have been that ball state fair. Oh. <laughs> been there before. Not a lot of fun, especially when you're making your pitch. Oh, two to Hardy. Did miss by much. I look like it actually got the bottom part of the strike zone in 86. 0 2, seven time for Weaver in this game. He's been ahead of the count 0 2. Touches the bottom part of the strike zone, didn't get the call. Hardy goes down for the first out. <laughs> Boy, out there, a fastball that was just missed. Down, comes back with a slow curveball, and Hardy well out in front, couldn't make contact. So, one out, one on. Here's Jonathan Scope, native of Curacao. 0 for 2, a pop up to second, and a ground ball to short. Got him on an off speed pitch that last time up. Well, he looked like he was guessing fastball first pitch. Said Weave, the veteran. It was a 69 mile an hour curveball. Ball backed up on Weave. A dangerous spot. 88 pitches, 60 strikes. Great ratio. Just checking in on Chris Davis at first. The Angels in the bottom of the seventh have the top of their order coming up at Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols. Tommy Hunter, right hander. Loosening now for Baltimore. So Tillman might be done after six. That's a cold strike three. Down goes Scope to outs. After so many off speed pitches, looks like that's what he was looking for. And he fooled him too. Break a ball away, break a ball in, and then paints the middle of the plate at the knees with a fastball at 88. Pitching backwards. Start him off, break a ball. Backed it up with a good fastball. Great location. Six punch outs tonight, no walks. Eight times he's been ahead of the count 0 2 in this game. There's Flaherty, the third baseman. Manny Machado not in the lineup today. Tightness in his lower back. Flaherty looks at his strike. Flaherty doubled with one out of the third. Eventually scored on the Marquecas single at that point, tied the game up at one. Ground ball towards short. Kybar's got it. The force out Davis. And that'll do it. Seventh inning stretch time here at the Big A. One, two, three coming up for the Angels. Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols down by run.
us your pictures using hashtag West Fan Photo. Your photo could be shown at an upcoming game broadcast. How about that, Ben Flores? It's the top of the order right there. One, yes. two, and three. Yes. Oh my God. Good pitcher on for the Baltimore Orioles. Right handed Tommy Hunter takes over on the mound for Chris Tillman. Tillman going six innings, one run, five hits, three strikeouts, and two walks. Both teams with five hits. The Orioles committed two errors. The Angels just have not been able to cash in those runs that have been in scoring position tonight. Tommy Hunter. Two and one record of 3.7 ADRA pitching in his 35th game has 11 saves. 33 to third innings, 34 hits, 25 strikeouts, and eight walks. Is tonight's first relief pitcher delivered by the UPS store. And his fastball, especially coming out of the bullpen, has been very effective for him. You know, challenge he rushes that up there in the mid 90s. Hunter pitched last night, pitched uh, just four pitches. That's all it took for him. Cole Calhoun looks at strike one. Cole tonight, one for three. Single back in the second, reached in the fifth inning. That was with one out. He's had a couple of men on base with one away. Pools grounded out. Hamilton hit a fly ball to center. And Hunter fastball is 94 to 98. So a cut fastball, curveball. Very good curveball you saw there. And an occasional changeup. There's a breaking ball for a strike, one and two. Product of the University of Alabama before being drafted in the first round in 07 by Texas. And came over with Chris Davis to trade with the Rangers. This one's hit toward center, but out of Jones had to play perfectly one down. Well struck by Cole, nothing to show for it. That'll bring up Trout. Trout tonight, one for two. Midfield base hit, a run score in the first, a pop up in the third, a walk in the fifth. Huntley set up outside and Trout looks at the strike on the outside corner. Well, how often have you said that in this series from Baltimore pitching fastball outside corner? They've lived on that part of the plate. Watch out. 96 miles per hour. Two balls and a strike. Hunter originally a good starter. Did work out for him. Put him in the bullpen, give him a little velocity. Nice job settling in that pen for Buck Showalter. That one's outside. Three balls, one strike. Very good athlete, a two time junior Olympic gold medalist, judo. Not charging about. No. Three one pitch. Trout takes inside for ball four, so he's drawn two walks tonight. He's on board for Albert. Comes a little different as far as his time to the plays allowed three stolen base and four attempts. RBI single of the first, a double down the left field line to third, and a ground out in the fifth. Trout takes off, and the bouncer back to Hunter. He fires to second, and it's an inning-ending double play. A one, four, 
three. And we played seven here at the big end. Two to one, Baltimore. Insurance. Get a fast break quote at MercuryInsurance.com today and see how much you can save. And buy Hyundai. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Top of the eighth inning, two to one Orioles. The unconventional one four three double play as Trout was on the move there, and uh, the ball hit right back to Tommy Hunter. Interesting time to. Uh, I mean, the Trout had a you know, huge. Huge jump from first base when well, you talked about it, the athletic skills of Tommy Hunter under control He was a lot of times you'll you know, you'll look that way the second you throw the first It would be a very good one four three double play Hotly more cake is low against Jared Weaver Hotly drives one out toward left center field playable for track and track Roll away this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Kevin Jepson, first man up for the Angels. Five hits allowed by Weaver. Six strikeouts, no walks. Two runs, solo run in the third, solo run in the sixth. Marquez is one for three, had the RBI single in the third inning to tie things up. Thirty-third RBI of the year for the Orioles right fielder. Two zero. Sit there, two balls and one strike. Two guys with the best numbers against Weaver. Not great numbers, but the best numbers. Jones and Marcakis, both with RBI singles. Off the plate. It's three balls, one strike. Walk is down for Jared since he went eight innings to get to Texas on June 21st. And again, no decision in that one. The ball is in the full count. Later in that game, at five strikeouts, two walks, one run allowed, four hits. He has been uh, very, very good tonight. Payoff all the way. Slow breaking ball popped him up. Shallow center field. Eric Ibar cutting out. Calls everybody off. Two down. Good communication all around from Howie, Eric Ibar, and Mike Trout.
Two outs, bases cleared. David Lowe, the left fielder, now at the plate. We've talked to Navarro to make sure he's aware that that side of the infield, in case Lowe decides to drag a bunt down that way. Lowe singled his last time up, two out, not in the right field. Actually, stole second. Came in as Jones cued a ball in the right field with two outs. He put Baltimore up two to one. This one in the right field, trying to come down and in and get him. Lowe picks up his second hit. And Jones will bat it. Now you got to deal with Lowe once again at first base. What's over the situation with the load is pitch him away, play him away. He's able to drop the head of the bat on the inner part of the plate it's twice now, twice in a row. The first two times he got low to hit a, a weak ground ball to third base on a slow breaking ball and then uh, off speed him. The second time up hit the fly ball to center. Both times he's come inside, he's picked up the knock to right. 100 pitches down the night for Weaver. Jones at the plate. The center fielder is one for three. Picked up a 64th RBI in the sixth inning. And Jepson should be uh, just about ready to go if Mike Sosha opts to go to the pen. <laughs> Missed inside. Single by low, the sixth hit for the Orioles tonight. Up at the Coliseum, Oakland leading Houston 8 to 2. That game's at the bottom of the sixth inning. Everything else, a final throughout Major League Baseball. A lot of day games today. They'll get away travel day. Speed pitch, even to count it. One ball, one strike. And Lowe went on the third or fourth pitch. The last of bat for Jones. It was a 2 1 count last time that uh, Jones ended up taking for a strike. And that's a little slider off the end of the bat. That was a slider he wanted to throw the time before against Jones. A sharp break, but that one last time didn't have as much break on it. This was a very sharp slider. Great location. One ball, two strikes, low. It's a lead for him over at first base. Stolen base he picked up in the sixth inning, his sixth of the year. One, two. Just missing low. Two, two now. Low takes off the 2 2 grounded toward short. Eric Ibar to his left has it. And we will head to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Angel Stadium with Hamilton, Ibar, and Kendrick coming up. The Angels down by a run.
back out for his second inning of work. Issued a walk in the seventh to face the minimum three. He uh, started the inning ending double play. Hamilton, Ibar, Kendrick to face Hunter here in the eighth inning. And he's been real effective at the bullpen, keeping the ball in the yard. His three home runs allowed in 33 and a third coming into the game. A couple Basketball. years ago, 32 home runs in 133 and two thirds inning pitch. Last year, 11 and 86 in the third. So he can give up the long ball. 1 0 pitch. Breaking the ball. Broken bat flare out toward right field. Scope got turned around and falls in there. Lead off single. Finally, a well placed base hit in the outfield for the Angels. Well, you talked about a perfectly placed hit. We've seen so many off the bat of the Orioles. It's good to see uh, one fall in for the Angels. Boy, it looked like Scope was going to get this baseball. He's going back and then turns the other way and then stumbles. He's caught just about everything in his entire series. He's way out there too in that overshift. The leadoff man on board, Eric Ibar, now at the plate. Flaherty, the third baseman, in on the grass, about three or four steps, guarding against the bunt. Eric over two, two ground downs and a hit by pitch. Lines this into the alley and left center field. That'll get down for him. Hamilton racing the third base. He starts in and away the win. Ibar at second. It's an RBI double and we are tied at two. Boy, how great is it to have Eric Ibar back? The RBI machine so clutch in that spot in the line, the fifth spot. So often we see Eric hit the first, second, or ninth spot in the lineup, but very productive in the RBI fifth spot in the lineup. This pitch is up. Simplified approach went with the pitch and goes the other way. Just a great swing from Ibar. And Hamilton moving well, scores all the way from first. So both runs have scored from first base for the Halos tonight. Go ahead, run at second base. Howie Kendrick, one for three. He singled to the left side his first time up. His last time up, I should say. Hunter will spin around. And that was to see if Howie would square around also the bunt. No indication that Howie was going to do that because Howie's really good as far as hitting the ball to that right side of the infield. First hit for Erickson, so uh, missing three straight games with that groin injury. That almost hits Kendra. See what they're trying to do there is pitch him inside. Yeah, and not allow him to hit the ball to the right side of the infield. How he's good as he is inside out. That's a difficult pitch to do so when it's up and in. And how that baseball didn't hit him. He's looking to try to drive that ball that way and almost got the jersey. Break the ball missing outside. It's two balls, no strikes. Lead off single by Hamilton. The RBI double by Eric Ibar to tie this one up at two. 2-0 two -oh pitch. Strike. Two and one. Our cake is very shallow in right field. Jones is always shallow in center. Shane Howie the opposite way. Two one now. Bouncer foul. And then he runs a two seamer inside at that point. After the last down, Angels live post game. There's everybody SoCal Mazda dealers. Let's break it down for you. Houston Street getting ready for the Angels. Brad Brock back up and loosening once again for Baltimore. Two balls, two strikes on Kendrick. David Freeze on deck. Nobody out. And I barred second. 2 2. Fouls this one off to the right, one with a fastball away. Two, two again. Swing and a miss, got him with a breaking ball, one down.
Hit their hard fastball away. Came back with a hard slider down and away. Now we unable to fight that one off. David Freeze 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a punch out. One for seven in the series. First one's cut on and missed. I was watching the alignment of the middle infielders for Baltimore. Eric Ibar trying to drift off and see potentially because you got Hardy well away from him. Scope playing towards the middle part of second base. Used an opportunity to try to steal the base. Counting it up at one ball, one strike. Six hits for the Orioles, seven for the Angels, two of which have come here in this eighth inning. Ibar takes off. The breaking pitch is a strike, and it's a stolen base for Eric. No throw from Hunter. So the go-ahead run now 90 feet away. Well, you can just tell just the way he was looking because of the fact is he have Hardy playing in the hole and Scope playing more so in the hole at second. And he timed his jump and slides in and seals the base. Infield in now for the Orioles. One ball, two strikes on Freeze. Huntley set up outside. It's a fastball that just misses. Two balls, two strikes. David struck down on a uh, very close pitch on the outside corner, similar to that last one. And his sixth inning at bat. Again, Hundley back outside. 2 2, foul back. 99 miles per hour for Tommy Hunter. Orioles have added a left-hander in their bullpen now, Brian Mattis. So it's Mattis and Brock for the O's, straight for the Angels. And prior to the All-Star break, David Freeze was so good in these situations, getting the job done, driving in that runner in scoring position. Freeze goes down, swinging on the breaking ball, back-to-back -back strikeouts, two outs. Well, we may see uh, Mattis here to face Efren Navarro. Hard slider, similar to the pitch he was able to get. How he Kendrick to swing and miss on. Okay, two outs. Ibar standing at third base. And instead, they're going to uh, walk Efren intentionally here with Chris Sinet on deck. What you've essentially done is guaranteed the fact that travel bat of the night at the very least. That's almost an angry throw from Hunter. Making sure he follows through on his delivery. That's important though when you're a pitcher, when you're walking the batter, you want to keep your mechanics the same. So when the next batter comes up, that first pitch was always important that your mechanics are still, still solid. So Ionetta coming up now with runners at first and third. Chris has one late appearance in his career against Tommy Hunter and it resulted in a walk. Ionetta tonight a walk and ground down the fly ball to right. Lays off the first one. Right handers have hit 303 against uh, Tommy Hunter this year. Lefty's 226. 
Ibar standing at third. And for Navarro standing at first. 2 2 tie here, the eighth, the 1 0. Breaking ball. Missing outside. Two balls, no strikes. Top of the order. Cole Calhoun on deck. Chris Dillman went six innings, allowed a run on five hits, three strikeouts, two walks. Jared Weaver, two runs, six hits, six punch outs in his eight innings. Chris is a little too aggressive on a fastball and a fastball count. That was out of the zone and down. Potentially ball three. The guy that uh, prides himself on the strike zone, but chance to be the hero here. Two on pitch. That's off the plate. Three and one. Three one from Hunter. All right, then it takes ball four and they're loaded up. So make that two career plate appearances against Hunter, both base off balls, and here comes Buck Showalter. The Cole Calhoun coming to the play looks like Brian Mattis will be summoned, the left hander. Eric Ibor after the Josh Hamilton leadoff single. Brought home Hamilton with the RBI double to the alley left center field to tie this one up. Angel still batting with a base loaded two outs when he returned. Of the eighth inning with the bases loaded and two outs. A walk to Chris Ionetta by Tommy Hunter loads him up, and that's why Buck Showalter is uh, gone to the bullpen to bring in the left hander, Brian Mattis. Hunter had not allowed an earned run in his last 12 appearances, though, encompassing 14 innings, hitting a new career long streak. He able to lower his ERA, but he gave up the run here in the eighth. He's responsible for all three guys. On base, it's our in and out. Who's in? Who's out? Hunter done. Mattis is in. Mattis fastball 88 to 93. Slider curveball changeup. But how often do you see after a pitcher attempts he walks a batter, the very next batter, you struggle with command, and that's what happened. And interesting to boot too, considering the uh, the splits this year with Hunter and two outs. The borrow at the plate, intentional walk, followed by another walk. Cole Calhoun tonight is one for four. First one is low. One ball, no strikes. Mattis has held left handed batters to a 215 batting average. Two at two this year, a 4 4 6 ERA. He has one appearance in this series. That was two nights ago. That was to retire Josh Hamilton. And he did just that. A strikeout in the seventh inning of Monday's game. 
Ibar standing at third base. Navarro at second. Ionetta is at first. The 1 0. Caught the inside corner. One ball, one strike. Two runs, six hits, two errors, and four left on for Baltimore. The Angels with two runs, seven hits, no errors, eight men left on. Forty thousand one eighty five in the house tonight. The finale of this three game set. One one. Two balls, one strike. And the base is loaded. Two one count. The man swings to the hitter here now, Cole Calhoun. And if Mattis has to throw a strike, more than likely the most comfortable pitch to throw a strike for him will be his fastball. Cole's batting average against left-handers has gone up as the season has progressed. It's up to 265. And he'll spend some time on the disabled list. Last year, hit 340 against lefties. 2-1. Lays off, and it's three balls, one strike. And now you're looking right middle of the plate. If it's not there, you can afford to take that pitch because you're going to get the exact same pitch if it is a strike three two. Walks home with the go ahead run. A pitching change yet again, still in the eighth. The Angels now lead at 3 2. To retire a left-handed batter and he walks Cole Calhoun and it gives the Angels a three to two lead Eric Ibar's double tied it up at two in this inning and now it's the right-hander Ryan Webb on the mound to face Mike Trout Webb two and one at a 3.79 ERA in his 40th game this year 40 in the third innings 37 hits 33 strikeouts and nine walks and Mike the mark uh, I tell you what, the, the one thing that stands out in this inning is the decision by Buck Showalter to intentionally walk Efren Navarro with a man at third base and two outs considering the splits favored Tommy Hunter. And we talked about it early in the game with Buck. He is so studious as far as knowing numbers, looking at charts, went with his gut feeling to go lefty or righty versus righty, then eventually lefty versus lefty, but it's went against him. 
And Webb, he's a guy that throws a hard slider himself. He'll throw a lot of sliders here. The trap fastball is 88-93. Sometimes you get caught up in that whole righty versus righty, righty versus lefty. Instead of going with the, the straight numbers. But that Trout. swing by Ibar is so important yep. in this inning. After Hamilton led off with a flare single just beyond the reach of Jonathan Scope, who got turned around. Trout tonight one for two with a single and a couple of walks. One ball, no strikes. Well, the last couple of seasons, pitching for the Marlins, originally a fourth-round pick back in 2004 of the Oakland Athletics. And he's out of high school in Clearwater. 1-0 pitch. That is in there. He was up to count at one ball, one strike. First appearance of the series for Webb. Taking over for Tommy Hunter. He's responsible for the three guys on base. Three consecutive walks. Check that Calhoun belongs to Mattis. 1 1 pitch. This is out toward left field. Low. Moving back. Makes a catch. The inning comes to an end. But the Halo strike for two runs. We head to the ninth. Houston Street on to close it out. The Angels up 3 2. Up and then Cole Calhoun, a bases loaded walk to give the Angels a 3 to 2 lead as we begin the ninth inning. And new closer Houston Street on in relief. And here the ninth, he'll be facing Cruz, Davis, and Hardy. Houston made his uh, debut Saturday's game. That was against the Seattle Mariners. 34 games this year. 1 0 mark and a 1.06 ERA. Two time All Stars. Yeah, he's got a good fastball. He keeps it down. He's 792 range slider. Very good changeup. John McDonald takes over at third base. David Freeze. Jared Weaver tonight. Two runs allowed. Six hits, six strikeouts. Eight innings of work. Spectacular outing for, uh, for Jared. Actually, the first time that he's uh, gone eight innings since he started June 21st. That was right here at the Big A against the Texas Rangers, in which he got a no decision. That's the fourth time this year he's got eight or more. He had the right guy on the mound tonight. He threw the ball exceptionally well. We did. Nelson Cruz to lead things off. He's the DH. 0 for 3 tonight. Pop up and a couple of strikeouts.
first one, a little breaking ball misses upstairs. And that Saturday game in which Street made his debut. Give up a two out single to Kyle Seeger. Nothing more. Picked up a strikeout as well. This one's off the end of the bat to right. Cole Calhoun is there. One down. That was on the heels of a fantastic eight innings by Garrett Richards. That game on Saturday. Garrett will be going tomorrow night. The opening game of the series against the Tigers locked up against Max Scherzer. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. But Houston Street trying to make sure the Angels have some momentum for the Tigers to take the field tomorrow. Here's Chris Davis, the first baseman. He will look at the strike. Davis one for three, singled in the seventh. One ball, one strike. Kind of how this uh, whole series has played out. 4 2, 4 2. And now, here in the uh, finale, currently 3 to 2. One out of the night. Yeah. Uh, we talked about great out of the All Star break, some tough competition, great pitching. Every one of these games, all six have been well pitched, well defended. Just looking for that right hit at the right time. One two to Davis now. Foul back. Another one two upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. And starting that windup and stopping. Resetting. High dead at street. Teammates with the Colorado Rockies. 2-2. Two, two. Full count now. Going with an speed. J.J. Hardy on deck. Straight into the windup, and here comes the uh, payoff pitch. That is upstairs. A one out walk. Tiger on board, and I'd head out to talk things over. JJ Hardy will come to play now. Hardy's rolled into six double plays. Houston Street. Generally a ground ball pitcher. First one to Hardy. That's it, their first strike. Oriole shortstop, open for a couple of fly ball outs and strike out. Speed for a strike. Oh, moving on that pitch. Snowballs and two strikes now. Albert, the, uh, the only guy not to cover the plate in that eighth inning. Just sending eight men to the plate, scoring twice and leaving them loaded. 0 2 pitch. 
Kind of a chase. That's a good miss right off the outside corner with a slider. As we speak, uh, Houston trying to mount a comeback. They're now down nine to four, batting in the uh, top of the eighth inning. That's former Orioles closer Jim Johnson. One, two now. This one yanked down the left field line. Foul. Not in front. That's twice in the sequence against Hardy, where Houston's let a, let a slider hang out over the plate. And that's why Chris Ionetti is going to go out and talk to Houston at this point to make sure when you're throwing a slider, get on top and work down and away on that pitch. Got around the slider to spinning out the middle part of the plate. And Hardy, we've said it in the series, when he gets his arms extended, he hits the ball extremely hard. So your offering here at one ball, two strikes would be? I go fastball, just paint the outside corner down. Chris is set up outside. It's a swing and a miss. Down goes Hardy, two outs. Now that's a better breaking ball. Hard slider, well located. The adjustment was made. The communication with Ionetta and Street to get back on top of that slider. The rotation, the seam rotation, and that hard slider different than the pitch before. Jonathan Scope, the second baseman, up with two outs and a man on. Taps this one foul. Goes to the left of the 40,000, 185. Now uh, beginning to uh, rise to their feet. They're just looking for their 60th win of the season. A one pitch. Swing and a move. So a two. You got to go there further away. Oh, no break. question. Keep it down. Keep it off the plate. Let the youngster expand his zone. Halo's coming from behind, scoring twice in the eighth inning. To take a three to two lead and Street trying to close it out. Here comes the 0-2. Swing and a miss, light that baby up as the Angels come from behind, take the finale, 3-2 the final. The 31st time this season the Halos have come back. Eric Ibar with that great swing the other way in Houston Street. Nasty slider to finish off. Scope to pick up his first career save as an Angel. The All-Star, outstanding. Jared Weaver, eight great innings pitch, picks up his 11th victory of the season. Josh Hamilton got it started. Eric Ibar brings him home. And in some patience at the plate, picks up this victory. 21st comfort behind victory at the Big A. And the sixth win for the Angels this year when they've trailed after seven innings. Houston Street notching his first American League save. That was the last time he did that was September of 2008 as a member of the Oakland Athletics. But uh, it was that eighth inning. Started off a broken bat single off the bat of Josh Hamilton. He had scored from first on the RBI double off the bat of Eric Ibar. The Angels were loaded up and then Cole Calhoun worked the basis loaded walk against left-hander Brian Mattis to give the Angels their margin of victory. 3-2 the final. Let's go down to Alex Curry. Alex? Thank you, Victor. Houston, your first save as an Angel. How did it feel to come in and get it done? Oh, it needed me to. Um, that's my job. It, it felt good. Obviously, you want to get the first one. You want to get off on the right foot. Um, boys have been battling. We pitched a great game. Um, just trying to get the job done. Made some good pitches. We wanted to pitch away from Davis a little bit right there. Obviously, a guy would pop. Two righties coming up. Uh, but it did feel good. Now, this is the first time you got to see Weaver throw as a teammate. The team has won his last seven starts. How impressed were you with his outing tonight? Uh, it's, it's why he's been around for so long. He's a leader. He's a guy that goes out and takes the mound. Uh, we needed a win today. Um, that's what aces do. I mean, you, you give Weave a lot of credit, but give give the whole team that, that to score two runs right there in the eighth inning. Uh, the types of at bats we took right there to score those runs. Uh, 
It's cliche, but it was a great team win, and we needed it. And speaking of that, you said you came to this team to win and do whatever it took. How much did you see that effort in this victory tonight? It did. It was, uh, I did. And, uh, I, you know, winning, winning takes care of everything. Winning is more fun. It's the best way to do things. Um, I don't know what to say about tonight other than we won. I'm happy about it. Let's go win tomorrow. Well, congratulations on your first save. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. The Angels get their 31st come from behind victory. And up next, Patrick O'Neill, Tim Salmon, and Jose Moto will break it all down on Angels Live, presented by your SoCal Mazda dealer.